Hey, I'm Morgan from findpoints.biz and my goal is to help you get organized. Today I'm going to talk about trusting people online because I know it can be really challenging and that's something I've been thinking about recently. So if you're a bookkeeper and you want to avoid those sketchy clients, keep watching. So I broke this up into two sections. The first one is some really concrete ways that you can protect yourself. So kind of put some checks and balances in place. So hopefully you wouldn't run into any problems with someone who maybe doesn't have your best interests at heart. And then the second part is how to identify those people ahead of time so that hopefully you don't even get into that situation in the first place. All right, the first way that I recommend that you protect yourself is never take your client's bank logins. So I know there's different ways to do this and I've done it different ways in the past, but the best practice would be that you create the QuickBooks online account and then your client goes in and hooks up their bank account through QuickBooks Online. And so if they need your help, you can be on like a Zoom call while, you, while they're doing it if they don't feel like they have the tech skills. But overall, you don't want to have too much access to their bank accounts. So if you have limited access to their accounts, you're not going to be able to do that much. And so they could never accuse you of doing anything dishonest because, you know, you're not able to transfer funds. You're not able to do all the things that they can do when they log into their bank account. Another option for this that I've talked about before is having them create a separate bank login for you. So that is also another way to do it. And they can choose the permissions they give you, usually depending on their bank. And so, you know, they can only let you have access to certain things. All right, the next way to protect yourself is to make sure you set up your business in a way that protects you from personal liability. So there's a few things you can do. First of all, make sure you have created an LLC, a limited liability company, so that your business isn't connected to your personal finances. So that if, hopefully not, but if someone happens to sue you, then they cannot take all of your personal assets. The second way is to find a good contract of employment to use. So you can consult a lawyer if you need, or you can get advice from other, you know, colleagues that you have, other bookkeeper colleagues, if they have something that you can use. If you're interested in those three things I just mentioned, but you kind of don't know where to start, I do have a class that walks you step by step how to do those things. So I'll leave it down in the description box if you're interested. All right, number three, I didn't exactly know how to word this, but basically just act with integrity at all times. So there are a set of accounting principles that you should be following, that all business owners should be following. Um, I can probably find a link to that, the generally held accounting principles. You can Google that as well. But um, I feel like I just had good examples of this when I was starting out. I worked closely with an accountant, like I worked in the same office as her while we were working at a nonprofit. And so I just, you could tell that she wouldn't bend the rules. And I think that's sometimes like a kind of a gray area um, you can probably find accountants that have different levels of compliance. And that could be like kind of a personality thing. Like some people are more come across as more rule following than others. But I think it's just not worth it to even have a question of that integrity. Like you need to tell your business owners, you can't put personal expenses on your business card. That's just not acceptable. And I'm not going to categorize it as a business expense if it's clearly a personal expense. So I think anytime you can just stick to your guns and do what you know is right, that is gonna help your business in the long run so much more than maybe making a client happy here and there um, with something that might be a little bit sketchy. All right, the next one is have built-in checks and balances. So this is something you can help your client with also if they don't have this, if maybe they're a small business and they're trying to figure it out. That is gonna help you as a bookkeeper make sure that you are beyond reproach and also um, you're gonna help their, them out like kind of creating those systems. So I'm sure there's lots of guidelines online about this, but you just need to have a division of duties. So the same person that is as collecting money should not be depositing and creating invoices and reconciling. Like there should be different people doing different tasks so that there's more than one set of eyes on every transaction. All right, and the next thing I want you to do is take security seriously. So make sure you are very careful with passwords, any passwords that you are in charge of. Make sure you're very careful on Wi-Fi networks. So I use LastPass to store all my client passwords. I learned really quickly that I had a lot of responsibility. At times I had credit card information from my client's customers. Um, so I needed to make sure that all of that was stored very securely. I never use Wi-Fi networks at coffee shops. I just don't anymore. I think you can if you have a VPN or if you have some kind of security, I think that it works, but make sure you check into that very carefully as well as just make sure what you're leaving out. So if you're in an office setting, make sure you don't leave petty cash or checkbooks or confidential information out, um, you know, lock your computer screen, just the basic security things that you know, but you might not always do. Make sure you're always doing those things. 
And kind of along the checks and balances line that I mentioned earlier, there's multiple users in QuickBooks. So that is a really good resource as well. So you can give certain people different permissions and the bookkeeper probably shouldn't be the only one who has a login to QuickBooks. Like make sure the owner has a login so they can see what's going on in there and everything is very visible to everyone. All right, and then I have some red flags that I'm gonna list that you can be aware of when you're initially interviewing a client to see if, you know, it's not gonna be a good fit because maybe that person wants you to do things that you don't want to do. You know, you can often tell from that initial interview if you guys are really on the same page or not. All right, so first of all, if it seems like the client wants a lot of stuff for free, or if they're really nitpicky about finances, they might not be a good fit long term, as well as if they've had a lot of turnover. Think about how do they talk about their last bookkeeper? Are they really complaining about their bookkeeper? And does it seem like maybe the client might be the issue. The client might be the sketchy one who probably the other bookkeeper left because it was not a good fit for them either. And again, if they mention any of kind of those gray areas about mixing personal and business or things that you want to deduct or just things you're not comfortable with, you could probably tell right off the bat that it's not gonna be a good fit. As well as make sure they are respectful of your time. So you don't want someone that's gonna be calling you every hour of the day and expecting things immediately. So you can often tell that right from the beginning. Often there is some kind of like scope creep it's called in, in uh, bookkeeper circles, maybe in other circles as well. So you know, you said that you're gonna do these 10 things for them. And then they're like, oh, can you also prepare my 1099? or oh can you also add this other thing in so sometimes you can kind of think ahead and kind of build in some of those costs or some of those time things into your into your rates but if clearly the client continually asks you to do things that are beyond what you agreed upon then make sure you speak up and you talk to them about that and then you say oh yeah okay i can do that but it's gonna cost this much extra because that wasn't part of our original contract another red flag would be that they are revealing too much confidential information in an initial interview so if they're talking about their other clients or their competitors finances or anything like that that could be a sign that they don't really hold that confidential information as closely as they should be and i think overall you know, you just get a gut feeling when you're in an initial interview and you can kind of tell if it's something that you want to do or don't want to do. I was also thinking about this just in any business. So my husband owns his, his own business of like 10 people and he has to hire people and he doesn't know always if they're going to be honest. Like, you know, if you're a business owner, it can happen that things don't work out and, you know, you could run into trouble. Luckily, we haven't had too many troubles, but I've kind of been trying to use that as a standard when I'm thinking about meeting people online because my mom was talking to me and she was like, I can't believe you just like, you know, meet, meet these people online and then work for them. And I can understand that it is kind of a stretch. It's kind of a new thing, especially to different generations. But we kind of have to extend that trust and that goodwill to people even in, you know, our everyday lives. So, you know, if you have a plumber come to your house, you're hoping that they're not going to steal something from you. And you want to be smart about it and you want to put certain protections in place to, you know, not be dumb and not just leave everything out in the open. But I think there is kind of a lesson in just trusting people as much as you can, as well as having that savvy. And if you do need to fire a client that is definitely within your rights, I would recommend being as professional and calm as possible. You don't necessarily need to list every single thing that they did wrong or all the problems, but you can just say, this isn't working out for me anymore. And try as hard as you can to get that last payment so that you are not left with, you know, having done work that you don't get paid for. That could happen. I have heard many stories of that happening. And at that point, you may just need to decide to cut your losses, depending on the dollar amount, maybe. I think as much as you can just kind of like emotionally detach from the situation, you're going to be a lot healthier in the long run. Thank you so much for watching. If you could leave me a comment down below and let me know what other kinds of videos you'd like to see, that would help me out a lot. Because I really want to make videos for you guys, and I'm curious in what you are interested in. All right, hope you have a great day. Bye.